You know, this is a beautiful little airplane you've got here. What's it called? This is an Excalibur. Now, how did you get involved in the Excalibur aircraft? Well, uh, years ago I built a, a, a Rally 3, and I've always been into aircraft, and I had a Cherokee, so I sold my Cherokee, and I figured my mission now would be just to fly a, fly a small plane. And uh, I think the smaller the plane, the more fun they are. Now, how did you find out about the Excalibur aircraft? Uh, well, I read a lot of magazines and, and saw some saw some ads. Uh, I, in fact, I got Tom's ad from uh, one of the one of the Ultra Light magazines, and he was in Sebring, and uh, that was that was a close place to to get the uh, to get the plane, and get the kit. So I I checked with him after checking on Challengers and a couple other uh, kinds of airplane. Now, why did you decide on the Excalibur aircraft? Was there something about it that you liked? Or? Uh, yes. Uh, I, I was going to get a Challenger. Uh, the factory was up in Indiana, and then I found Tom in Sebring, which, which was a uh, close, close co uh, cousin, I would say a close cousin to the Challenger, and he's made a lot of improvements on it. Uh, uh, for instance, he made uh, the controls push-pull rods instead of cables and uh, has a shock landing gear uh, uh, with bungee cords and uh, a lot of other improvements I really liked on the Excalibur. Now, did you take it basically from a kit form and move it all the way through to what you have now? Uh, yes, yeah. Uh, uh, he sent me the kit, uh, got the wings first, and finished the wings, and then, uh, then uh, well, first the tail section, then the wings, and then uh, the fuselage, and uh, worked on a little bit at a time in the hangar here, so. Now, did you, have you already built airplanes prior to this, or was this a brand new experience? Uh, I built one about 20 years ago when Ultralights, well, probably about 25 years ago when Ultralights first came out. It was called a Rally 3, and it was, uh, it was uh, kind of... The old Rotec Rally. Rotec Rally. It was uh, scary uh, looking back at it now. <laughs> but that was a total different type of construction than what you've got here, though. Here you're doing normal fabric covering and uh, shrinking and all that. The, the Rally was basically just a slip-on cloth and put it onto an, uh, uh, a ladder type of frame. That's, uh, that's correct. This is uh, my first experience doing anything with fabric work. Uh, I just followed the book, and, uh, and it worked out pretty good. It, um, did you build it in the hangar here? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I built it. Uh, I built it right here, just a uh, little bit at a time. So. I'd... Now, I hate to say this, but you're not exactly the youngest guy <laughs> taking on this type of a project. Did you find that it was overwhelming at any point in time, or? Ah, uh, yes. I found it was very overwhelming when I got the kit, <laughs> <laughs> and I saw all these little parts, and uh, my wife came out here and. Uh, she says, oh, my God. She says, you'll never finish that. And uh, it was overwhelming then, but, you know, I guess it's kind of like eating an elephant. You know, you take one bite at a time, and uh, it, it went together. Now, what was the hardest part of building the airplane? I would say the uh, covering, that was, that was the hardest part for me. I've never worked with fabric before. I've never worked with the glue and the, and the paint and all that. So uh, that, was a, that was a new experience, and it was... Uh, it was a little bit uh, overwhelming, but uh, just the same thing, a little bit at a time, and it worked out okay. Now, the manuals and stuff that went with the airplane, were they easy to follow? Could you go from point A to point B and get the uh, Yes, yes. The, the manual was, uh, was uh, adequate. Uh, what really helped a lot was uh, there was like maybe 2,000 pictures that I had on CDs for every little step of the plane that I was building, so uh, the... Uh, just following by pictures uh, helped a lot too. Now, how long do you feel it took you to go from when they dropped the kit off or the, uh, and to actually have it up and flying? Well, actually, it took me about a year and a half, okay. but and, that was working on it part time. Yeah. You know, when any, I any idea hours wise, how many you have into it? I would say, I would say about 400, 450 hours. Okay. Now that's right through to the the painting and everything. Else everything, there. yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Now. What type of power did you decide on uh, to using on it? Well, my budget was a little uh, wasn't too good, so uh, I decided on the 503 after talking to to uh, Tom and to some of the other uh, pilots, and they they convinced me that the 503 engine would be uh, perfectly adequate for this uh, this aircraft here. So uh, I went with the 503. Okay. Now, how many hours do you have on the airplane now? I've got about 140 hours on it now. So you've been doing a fair amount of flying this little girl. Yes, I do. We fly every day. I have a buddy that has a plane in my hangar here, and, and he comes out just about every morning, and we, we go flying for an hour or so. So. 
We're having a good time. Have you made any cross-country flights on it? Have you traveled any distance? Uh, no, not with this one. I uh, farthest I've been was Sebring or uh, Lake Placid. Went went to Vero, Vero, probably about 50 miles. So that's that's about it for the cross country. So uh, it's more just a, a fun airplane flying low and slow and uh, landing in some of the farm fields around here and uh, along the river and places like that. So that. Now, performance-wise, how have you found the airplane? And for example, uh, you mentioned some of these fields. Is it something that can get in and out of a, a short field? Yes. Uh, yeah, I guess it'll take about 400 foot for for takeoff. And uh, uh, the better I get at my landings, the shorter they're going to be too. But uh, they it it uh, does real well on that. Okay. And what type of cruise speeds and things would you get out with the 503? Uh, to tell you the truth, I cruise at uh, I cruise about 5,000 RPM. And I'm getting about 55 mile an hour, and most of the time, unless I'm trying to catch my friend or or get someplace, uh, that's that's about as fast as I fly. I just figure that you know 5,000 RPM is going to keep that engine for me for a long time, and uh, so I just I just fly low and slow. Now the other thing about an airplane is ground handling. How does the airplane handle on the ground? Is it easy to steer? Is it easy getting in and around in the field? That type of thing? Oh yes, there's no problem at all with the uh, nose wheel steering. Uh, it can just about turn on a dime. It works real well that way. Mm -hmm. And I saw a piece of video of someone doing a real hard landing on one of these things, and I thought the landing gear was going to come up through the fuselage. But uh, so that landing gear it must work pretty well. Uh, landing gear, I, I really like. Yes, uh, the, the shock helps a little bit if you if you have a pretty rough landing or a little bad landing or you get some bumps. Uh, the shock helps a lot, and uh, I've never I never dropped it out of the sky like I saw the picture that you saw, but. Uh, I hope I never do, but uh, yes, it works real well. Huh? The airplane also looks to have a, a lot of visibility uh, from uh, the uh, cockpit. Yes, it does. That's that's one of the reasons I bought it. That's one of the reasons why I won't put doors on it. Uh, I live in Florida, of course, so I don't need the doors, and, and it's just like a, a convertible. I mean, I can see everywhere. Uh, very, very nice, good for photography and uh, things like that. And I notice you've got a little windshield here for the uh, rear person. Well, that's true. Uh, my wife went for the first ride in it. She hated it because the wind was just smacking her in the face. And uh, so I, I decided I'd experiment with a windshield. So I, I did a real simple thing. I just bought an old used motorcycle windshield and put it on there to see if it'd work. And it, it's still on there and it works really well. Uh, in fact, I got five more mile an hour speed out of it by putting the windshield on. So if somebody wanted to get a little more information on these calibers or a website or something, they go to get it? Yes, uh, the ExcaliburAircraft.com uh, is uh, Tom Carr's factory there, and, and he can give you all the information. He'll send you a video. And uh, I've also got to add that I had excellent, excellent factory support. In fact, Tom came out here uh, three or four times. It's a 100-mile round trip. I get stuck on a little bit of building, and, and Tom would come out here and um, get me straightened out. And I would say he came out maybe three or four times the whole time I was building the aircraft just to help me out. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome.